Dan Arbel. He's former deputy chief of mission at the Embassy of Israel and a scholar in residence at American University. So it's a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you for your time. So relations you, between evening. former President Barack Obama and former Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu were not warm at all. Do you think Bennett's relationship with President Biden would be any different? Well, it's just the start of the relationship, but it's off to a good start. I think they had a very good first meeting. And it looks promising. After years of tensions between Netanyahu and the Democratic administrations, Barack Obama, and even in the first uh, part of uh, Joe Biden's presidency, now there's an opportunity for uh, the new prime minister and the new Israeli government to op open a start a fresh page in the relationship. And I'm optimistic that this would be the case. Uh, let's just turn uh, sides, uh, spe specifically on the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. So president Biden says he believes both Communities equally deserve freedom and democracy, but he's also said that, quote, until the region says unequivocally they acknowledge the right of Israel to exist as an independent Jewish state, there will be no peace, end quote. Biden helped broker a ceasefire between the two in May, I think it was. Do, do you think he could help rectify the conflict as a whole? You know, it's a very, you know, many presidents have tried to rectify the conflict unsuccessfully, and I think Biden understands that on his watch right now, uh, with the circumstances on both sides, on the Israeli and Palestinian sides, are both in political, uh, face political constraints at home, uh, it would be very difficult to advance uh, a resolution of the conflict, a two-state solution. But it would be possible to lay down the, the groundwork for future resolution of the conflict through confidence-building measures between the two, par two sides and through uh, trust-building and perhaps economic development uh, encouraged by the United States uh, to provide support that would enable uh, somewhat of a uh, making progress on this issue in the future. I don't think that right now anybody has um, uh, a, a, a desire or uh, there's no thinking that things could move forward anytime soon anyway. When the two met on Friday, President Biden said, we're putting diplomacy first and see where that takes us, but if diplomacy fails, we're ready to turn to other options. Do you think that comment was particularly aggressive? That, that, uh, that comment came as a result of Israeli, uh, you know, Israel raised this and asked Biden to kind of uh, give this uh, nuance, the U.S. message, make it, making it clear to Iran that while the United States is pursuing a diplomatic solution and a return to the joint comprehensive plan of action, the Iran nuclear deal, if things do not work out, uh, then there are other options, kind of giving, uh, providing the Iranians or showing the Iranians there's a carrot, which is a deal, or sticks, which it, that if it doesn't go for a deal. So I think there was a deliberate message to, clear message to the regime in Tehran that it must get get its act together if it, and it should prefer a deal and not go for other options that the United States and Israel may come up with in the future. Right, Mr. Dan Abel, once more, appreciate your time. Thank you.